So we hear a lot these days about financial engineering. And so I want to tell you a little bit about what it is that financial engineers do. Uh, and there's so many different things that they do, which is, which is part of the problem. I just want to pick a couple of examples that uh, we've heard about a lot in, in the present situation and, uh, and try to explain briefly what they are. So what financial engineers do is financial innovation. They invent, invent new kinds of securities for which they perceive there is a market where, where there, there's a need for uh, investors to, um, to invest in different kinds of, of assets. Uh, so two particular kinds of financial innovations that there have been a lot of uh, recently are credit derivatives and asset-backed securities. Let me say what those are in general. Uh, a derivative security uh, is one whose value is derived from the value of an underlying asset. At least that's what it was originally. So we have the futures markets, which go back to the mid-19th century. If you hear on your, uh, on your news broadcast what the price of oil is uh, today or tomorrow, it's probably not the price that somebody actually paid today. It's the price of a futures contract, which means that somebody has agreed to deliver oil at that price one month from now or two months from now, whatever the current contract uh, is for. Uh, then there are, more recently, stock options is a very big market where you can purchase the right to buy shares of stock at a fixed price at a future date. So in the case of futures, there's an underlying asset which is oil, or it could be uh, ag an agricultural commodity, it could be gold, uh, but there's, there's real stuff there. In the case of um, stock options, there are shares of stock which are a thing you can own which uh, have this, um, which have a price and that somehow relates to what the price of the option is. Here we're talking about credit derivatives. Now credit is not an asset that you can hold in your hand. Uh, it's, it's more um, intangible than that. And so what a credit derivative is something that's derived from the credit quality of an institution, okay? So a company that issues bonds gets a rating uh, from one of the rating agencies like Standard & Poor's or Moody's, and that determines the quality of their credit. And what credit derivatives do is they, uh, there are a number of different kinds of contracts where the value of the contract is based on that credit quality. And, and I'll give a specific example uh, uh, in a minute. Uh, now, an asset-backed security is something like this. If, if the state of New Jersey wants to build a highway and they need money for it, they can issue a bond. And they basically borrow money from investors and they can, uh, they can say, you know, this bond is backed by the taxing authority of the state legislature and we'll, we will collect tax and we'll pay off the bond. But there's something else they can do. For example, if they want to build a toll road which has a revenue stream, they can say we will dedicate you know, a certain percentage of the tolls that come in to paying off the debt, the money that we borrow to build this road. So there the debt is backed by this stream of money coming in from the tolls, and that, so that's, that's sort of the simple ex example of an asset-backed security. And we'll talk in a minute about the case where the assets, uh, instead of tolls from a toll road, are home mortgages and, and other familiar kinds of, of debt. Uh, so uh, the, kind, the example I want to give of a credit derivative is what's called the credit default swap. It's the one that's been in the news most recently, and it's the largest part of the credit derivatives market. Uh, it started maybe between 15 and 20 years ago. It was very small for, for the first decade, but in this decade, the market has uh, expanded greatly. Um, this chart is not up to date. The, um, the last bar here is um, 2004. And what, what it's showing here is from a value of $1 trillion in 2001, it went up to um, 
almost $10 trillion in 2004, and the values we've heard estimated recently are $60 trillion another four years later. Uh, now, what are these values? A credit default swap is a form of insurance policy. It's not called an insurance policy, so it would not be subject to the regulations that, that there are in, in all the states on the insurance industry. But basically, it's an insurance policy. You buy a bond from a corporation, and there's a risk involved. The risk is that the corporation may go bankrupt and therefore not be able to pay you back what they owe you. And so you buy an insurance policy uh, that says you pay a premium to somebody, and uh, which may be an insurance company. AIG, for example, was very big in this business. You pay a premium every three months for, say, a period of five years. And if at any time during that time the company defaults on the bond, you will get back your face value of the bond. Or if the, if, if the company can only pay you half, then the insurance policy will pay the other half. So, um, so the $60 trillion dollars uh, that we think these are all worth is the total face value of all the bonds that are insured. Okay, so very large number. In fact, it's larger than the total number of bonds that are outstanding. Now you say, how, how can that be? Uh, the interesting thing about this market is that unlike insurance on a home or a car, you can insure something that you don't own. You can buy an insurance policy on a bond that you don't own, and then if the company defaults, now you can go buy a bond cheaply, turn it over to the insurance company, and they have to pay you the, the original face value. So, so you can, uh, you're taking a, uh, the risk of paying this premium, but you can make a profit uh, if, if the company defaults. Okay, uh, so uh, here's how it works. Uh, you have basically uh, a bond issued by a company, and you have somebody who buys the bond, so pays the money to the company, the company pays back principal and interest over a period of years. And then there's this third party, the insurance company, the protection seller. And so the protection buyer, who's the owner of the bond, pays these premiums. And if there's a default, then money comes back the other way. Now, this is the very simplest form of this. More generally, uh, you're not insuring one particular bond, but any bond of a particular company. This is called... Uh, a name-based CDS. So, so you buy insurance against the fact that any bond, any bond of this uh, company may default. Uh, then there are even uh, more generalizations. You can, for example, buy uh, a policy that insures you against several companies def defaulting. So you may have five bonds of five different companies, and you can buy an insurance policy which pays off whenever the first one of those five defaults, if any. Or you can buy a policy that pays off when the third one defaults. As you can see, the more complicated these things get, the more difficult it becomes to know what they're worth. And this was part of the problem. The other uh, part of the problem, of course, is that the risk, uh, these things got, these bonds have these credit ratings, and how good the ratings are uh, is questionable. So, so that's another issue. Um, I should say, this is not a market that, that you and I can participate in. This is strictly an institutional market. These are very large, uh, very large contracts. This, the typical contract for a credit default swap is, uh, is a five-year contract with a $10 million uh, face value or, or notional amount. The other thing uh, you need to know about this market is that it's not regulated at all. Even something like stock options if I want to sell you a stock option, we don't actually make a contract. We both make a contract with an exchange or a clearinghouse that guarantees performance. So, so I can buy an option, you can sell an option, but we don't actually, individual investors don't deal with each other, they deal with the exchange and the clearinghouse. There is no such uh, body in the credit derivatives markets. And so uh, there's nobody to guarantee that these payments will be made. And, and there's nobody who knows exactly where they all are or how much they're worth. 